You are listening to another Third Coast Nerds podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I told you it was loud when it hit. Hey, now it goes. <laughs> it wasn't even that loud. Yeah, well, it, it hits kind of hard. It hits kind of hard, man. At least for me, at least in my spirits. It's been so long since I've done this. I'm rusty as hell, and I'm not quite sure. I hope I don't screw anything up. Because it's legit been like five months, four or five months since I last did this. And, and you're doing it all for me. Yeah. Yay. Yeah, because we had, we had one podcast that uh, was just f- uh, deleted or, or given up to the sands of time just because of rain and it made so much background noise. But we tried to do uh, a podcast from the truck on the way to Beaumont for oh, a yeah. comedy thing. And uh, yeah. the rain just like completely destroyed the audio quality and everything else. And it was just it kind of sad to let that one go because I thought it was a good conversation. But Yeah. I mean, two guys in the truck. <laughs> Two guys in a truck. Sounds like some Brokeback Mountain <laughs> song. Like the little Two guys in a truck. They're not giving up. It's it's love. an love. It's an internet meme that I don't think would look that good. Oh no. Two guys, one truck. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible. It's terrible. Um so what's up, man? Not much. Just living life, just Working, getting as much stage time as possible, working my day job and taking care of the family. Yeah. Yeah. How's it uh have you taken stand up into the workplace yet? They all know uh one or two people and sometimes uh just customers come up to me and they were like, Didn't you just perform at the, that one play like i've seen you before but you were performing don't you perform stand up i'm like yes and they're like oh man i th- i knew i seen you somewhere and i'm just like yeah just don't please don't tell anyone here about my stand up like don't don't go over to my supervisor and be like yeah that is one nasty <laughs> nasty dude he vulgar language just He's gross on stage, so I'm just making sure no one like really knows. But my coworkers do, and I joke around. I'm like kind of like the life of the party. Everyone's just like, uh, but I try to make sure everyone's energy is up with joking around and yeah, just. I would think that fun. the environment that you're in is probably a little more conducive to humor, where the environment I'm in is not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like I get people all the time. It's like. Oh, this is funny. You should use this in one of your like. They either say skits uh, yeah. or something retarded. I'm no, like, no, that's that's everywhere. That is everyday <laughs> life. When someone finds out that you're a comic or a comedian or that you even just go and tell jokes on stage, they're they're telling you old water cooler jokes or old bar jokes or yeah. just some like. I, I have a supervisor. She she comes up to me and is like, "You can use that in your stand up," and she doesn't even tell me what I can use in the stand up. Just she's like, "Have I made your stand up yet?" I'm no. Yeah, and, yeah. And like, well, when are you gonna put me in there? I'm like, I'm uh, I'm really not. And you try to break it to him. Like I I I did this last week where I told the guy I was like, I I literally can't describe to you. How I was like, I don't mean to like shatter your worldview, but I can't really describe to you how unfunny what you just said is. Like in the context of this beige wall palace, where we just, where where life is just a series of Manila folders, yeah. it is hilarious in here. Just like you know, a bean joke would be great in prison camp, but it's not funny outside of these walls. No, if I go on stage and repeat what I what my coworkers tell me to do in my stand up set or anything like that there's someone in the audience who might just commit suicide there. <laughs> right and uh, it'd be something like you, know, you ever reach for like a 1 inch binder clip and you pull out a half inch yeah. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> the big reveal <laughs> i i had one coworker tell me i could use this in my stand up and it was one of those kid throwaway jokes and I, I laughed. Like one, it, it was kind of like cute, funny. It was one of yeah. those like cute, funny jokes. But at the same time, he kept on saying, he, he's kept on coming up to me throughout the whole week. I'm like, have you used it in your stand up yet? Have you used it in your stand up yet? Uh, each and every day, and I'm just like, 
Yeah, uh, everybody loves it because he seems like one of those guys, like you piss off the wa- wrong day. Yeah, he he's going in probably with the salt off and just like, thanks for not using my joke <laughs> in your stand up. But it, it, it's a cute kid joke. Uh, it's uh, for the holidays. It's uh, why was Santa so depressed? And it was because he has low elf esteem. And <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It, it's a cute kid joke. I mean, I mean, s- some older kids will understand it, but like my uh, my five year old, she she wouldn't understand. It. She's like elves are Santa's helpers, and I'm like, yeah. And <laughs> that's the joke. Yeah. <laughs> just state a fact. Just just state a fact. Yeah. She does that a lot. Like I know what that thing is. Yeah. She she does that a lot. She. <laughs> She's awesome little know-it-all. I love her. What do you anticipate? I, I find this kind of like idea interesting to me. What do you anticipate, or I guess how do you anticipate how the crossover point's gonna gonna come up in your life, where all of a sudden like you're in a nine to five job, or you're like you're in a day job, but you're just getting hit so many times in the course of a day, like hey, you're that guy I saw you perform, like have you have you tried to put yourself mentally where that that cutoff point's gonna gonna happen uh, are you still just trying to like keep keep the eyes on the prize and keep working towards that um i i'm I'm really wanting to be known like everywhere not like like it it kind of bothers me when people come up and like when new co- comics are like, I, I want to be the next Kevin Hart. I want to be the next Kevin Hart. And, like, they want all that publicity and all that money and all that fame. I just want to be able to go out, tell jokes, have a great life. I don't even care. Basically, I can be in the minor leagues, but as long as I would be able to make a living out of it. Like, I I, I enjoy when cause, uh, like when regular people come up and like man i saw your comedy show one night you were performing at the improv or you you did a show at the joke joint or you did a show in this one bar and they they just tell like man you were funny and that was that's all i need like yeah. as as long as they enjoyed it then i enjoyed doing it and yeah because the goal like i see that a lot well, I mean, it's not even just a generational thing. It's been something probably since the beginning of time. But you see it to where it's like, I, I, I need to be in that place where I have the yacht and I have a helicopter and I have all these things. But no one ever says, like, I just want to be good, you know? No. Uh, uh, so many, so many, I mean, I did this when I first started almost three years ago. And I said, man, I, I could be rich. Excuse me. I could be rich, famous, and everything out of this. And I, I thought I was going to hit it quick uh, when I first started because I was doing, like, I, I started going out to this mic, that mic. And I started getting booked on shows, like, a year in. And two years in, I was getting booked and double booked and stuff like that. And then I'm just like, man, I'm still doing this. I'm still having fun doing this, but there's no way it's going to be, like, Life and luxury, like yeah. I, 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 I mean, somehow, some way, like it's not going to hit that early, because you think of uh, the Bill Hicks, the, the uh, Richard Pryors, the George Carlin's, everyone back in the day, they worked so hard, so vigorously, just for stage time. When they now, stage time is everywhere. You can get yeah. stage time. Uh, but there are some Houston comics comedians that are doing this full time, and they love it. And I, I look up to them, literally and figuratively, <laughs> that uh, they've been doing it. and They can make a living off of it, an easy living. Yeah, they have to go out on the road and such, but that's that's what I want to do. Is I want to be able to live comfortably, travel, get to see my family, as, and bring them around with me just we live comfortably by just telling jokes not life or luxury and i know i was curveballing the hell out of all that because <laughs> i was from here to there to there to here and then sideways no 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 it makes sense um i, I think a lot of people 
don't really aim for a sustainable a sustainable life doing what you really want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a lot of people shut themselves down to even pursuing it because the the journey to get to the highest level and have a uh, and have a skill that you're making a living off of, mm-hmm. but making a a realistic like. A, what would you call like a five percentile yeah. lifestyle? Yeah. Like not even a realistic goal. Like it, uh, the goal of just being great at what you do, but doing something that you love to do. Yeah. It's like, I, I don't know. You don't see it in either like skills based kind of things. It's like uh, you, you see like a kid pitching baseball in college or like even high school. And he's like, man, as soon as I retire, I'm going to be doing commentary on ESPN and everything else. Like they're looking at like, 45 years old yeah. and just having like extremely like it's it's great to have like lofty goals but like yeah. be learn how to throw the ball first pal yeah <laughs> be like let me throw this curve ball nope shit hit the batter yeah <laughs> no. that first that first test pitch you just beating yeah. someone in the head like oh this life isn't for me yeah <laughs> get hit with the ball and just like little league it's like all right, keep your eye on the ball. It hits you. You sit there and fucking cry and be like, "Fuck this game, I quit." Yeah, keep like, keep your eye on the ball. Don't put the ball in your eye. Yeah, <laughs> don't don't stop the ball with your face. Somehow, some way, I just thought of Sandlot with that guy with just <laughs> could have catch the damn ball. And he just crumples to the ground and he's like, ah, yeah, kill me, small. Or yeah, or yeah, yeah. You have to say yeah, yeah if you're if you're referencing sm- uh, Sandlot. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, uh, are you you're checking the score? Trying to. <laughs> For those that don't know, it's Monday Night Football, and the Houston Texans are playing. I mean, the game just just started not too long ago, and or see what they can do. Yeah, so. well, sports, man. It's. I love how at least we had one Houston team that completely wrecked us emotionally the day after, like the biggest. The, the biggest high that Houston's had in a long time. Wait, uh, Less than 24 hours after uh, the Astros yeah. won the World Series, we had our quarterback go down with an ACL injury. Yeah. Like, it's – oh, man. The Astros winning the series. That I, I'm still ecstatic about it. it. It doesn't even seem like it's real. Yeah. It really doesn't because – uh, I've been a fan since I was a kid. Uh, I remember the Killer Bees and the Astrodome. I remember my dad always took us to the Astrodome to games and such, and it was really cool. I mean, I got to see back in, like, 90, I want to say either 96 or 97 when we had Randy Johnson yeah. as our pitcher. Yeah. And then, I mean, of course, Biggio Bagwell. I went on the tour of Enron Field when it was still being built yeah when it was still being built we we got to go on a tour and got to see everything and that was really cool and then uh just uh i mean i'm i'm happy that the city of houston has so much support but i hate these damn van wagoner fans they don't they they just they they're not there when the bad stuff happens they're not there when like the mediocre they're there when all the great things happen. Yeah, and that that kind of gets to me a lot because I'm like, I I don't know how to describe it, but it just pissed me off because like when you were trying to find a shirt or some like anything Astros memorabilia. Yeah, they like if you don't have like a I, I, there's a generational cutoff, mm-hmm. but like if you don't have a memory of the dome, mm-hmm. like I'm more upset that my last memory of the dome was during the rodeo and they set it up as like a really bootleg like dance club and it was just sad and terrible <laughs> it was it's it smelled so horrible in there oh. <laughs> but yeah my last my last uh my last game memory of the dome man that's that's going back a little bit man i think i think the majority of my last visits to the dome were all rodeo stuff um saw reba mcintyre I'm sorry. One no, of the last no. Actually, years. you know what? River McIntyre is a hell of a woman. She's awesome. Brooks and Dunn, I believe, was uh on that last year as well. 
Um, I saw like the the last couple last few years of the the rodeo in the dome. We went to a lot of shows because we knew it was like this is going to go away. I remember uh, going to uh, my last. I was eight years old because I was playing like uh, like coach pitch uh, baseball. Yeah, and the coach was so big into bringing us into uh, to go to the games. And it was really, really cool because we were against the San Francisco 49 or not 49 Sorry, I'm still on football. Uh, we were against the San Francisco Giants where Barry Bonds was playing. Yeah. And, like, I, I brought food money. I was like, Coach Joe, I want I want nachos. And he was like, all right, well, you got to be careful and not, not eat them when Barry Bonds is that bad because he'll probably knock them into your lap. <laughs> and... I I was like whatever he's not gonna hit all the way up here, but Barry Bonds hit it to the upper deck. It, it was it wasn't close to us, but it was it, in a sense of home runs because we were up in the upper decks. We were kind of like lower upper deck, like row like five. He hit it like two sec or one section over in row four. So we're all just like what the. <laughs> and me being like, that ball came all the way up here, and I dropped my nachos. I was just like pissed because he was <laughs> he was joking around like Barry Bonds might hit a home run in your nachos, and I was like, no, he won't. And then I dropped my nachos because Barry Bonds hit a monster of a home run. Yeah, but a section away and a seat and like a row in front of us, and I dropped my damn nachos because I was just amazed. I was like, tell him stop because I thought like. He had some superpower where he was like, <laughs> he's going to hit it in your nacho. I'm like, no, that's just yeah, yeah. target practice. Like, you manifested it because you refused to put down the nachos yeah. in time, and that's what made Barry Bonds get the home run? No, but, I think the roids made him like, <laughs> get but, the home run. Well, going back, butterfly effect, Ashton Kusher, man, this shit's real. Yeah. Going back, it, they knew you weren't going to drop the nachos, therefore Bonds took the roids, Therefore, you are the reason why there's an asterisk in the history books <laughs> for baseball. <laughs> Clinton, you're the cause. You're the cause. I'm of, the cause. Of all of it. Barry Bonds, Sammy Sosa. You're the reason why Sammy Sosa is fat now. No, no. <laughs> I, I'm the reason Sammy Sosa is white now. Yeah. Have you seen recent pictures? Oh, my God. It's scary. It, it's it really scary. is because, see, like, uh, through Facebook, I, I was, it was like, do you know who this person is? And it showed – it showed him uh, how he is now, and I was like, "That dude looks familiar, but no, I don't know who the hell that is." And then you click on the picture; it's like it's Sammy Sosa. I'm like, yeah, it's such an extreme transformation. <sighs> like, because he's was been it out. was it all medical or I I did not read up on this. I, I, I think was he just, did. I think he went through treatments. I think he's gone through like plastic surgeries and stuff to to become white. He, yeah, I, yeah. It's like a whole process. If I remember, because I mean, He's I didn't. Dominican, like, or yeah, it's not like I did a whole lot of research into this, so I could just be talking on my ass. But I'm pretty sure what was mentioned in the article was the fact that he has been going through like plastic surgery to have his appearance altered. And because I mean, like you, touchdown. You're you're Sorry. part of one of the biggest. You're part of one of the biggest years in baseball history just for that home run race. And yeah, like asterisk, whatever. I don't care. I mean, it's cork bat. Everything happens. Every if if you're not cheating in sport, you're not trying hard enough to win. That's <laughs> see, I, I I knew like it's a it's a song as old as time. If you're not cheating in sport, if you're not cheating in life, then just you're not trying get, hard enough. To you're make not it. trying hard enough to make it. <laughs> if you're not cheating on your wife or your significant spouse, which, by the way, honey, I love you. No, I'm not cheating on you at all. The first time a kid tried to reach for the brass ring on the carousel and he thought, I can fashion a hook really quickly out of my belt. That kid's a winner. Yeah. That kid should be in charge of the other kids who aren't trying to, like, fashion other methods of attaining the best. I just said fashion three times. I'm going to go and drop the subject now because it's going to happen again. I'm too fuzzy on this. I'm still looking up at Sammy Sosa. And I'm, <laughs> it's like, that's funny. I type in Sammy S, and it comes up Sammy Sosa, baseball right fielder. And then the second is Sammy Sosa, white. Oh, that's – I'm sure that's that should be offensive to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> it's offensive to me. 
Uh, Sammy says it's white skin then versus now after. Oh, wow. He really bleached his skin. Wow. <laughs> I kid you not. I'm looking at a picture of him right now. And Sammy, uh, like, it's YouTube, and it says. He, I kid you not. He looks like, in these pictures, doesn't he look like Uncle Fester? And the, with the hat, with the with the pink hat, he looks like Uncle Fester with eyebrows. Oh, my gosh. That is frightening. He, he, I want to see if I can actually get this. Can we get this on the screen? Yeah. Yeah. He that looks, is He oh, looks like so Uncle scary. Fester with, <laughs> with eyebrows, man. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, yeah, so gotta go. <laughs> the Sosa family. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Oh, that's terrifying. Oh. That's that's gonna haunt your dream. Like, screw what is the Badabook, the the Babadook, whatever that is, that horror movie that came out a while back. It should have been Sam Sosa chasing kids. That's what. It <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's terrifying. Uh, I don't. I'm frightened by that image. I don't know where to go next. Um, <laughs> ain't no bleaching. I, I, <laughs> well, I mean, when I guess when you see the results of the starfish, and you're like, can you just do that all over? <laughs> You know what? When, you, I, when, uh, you, when uh, you lay down and, and stick your legs up in the air, it's like, make my entire body look like my asshole. You, you know what's so horrible is that for the longest time, I did not know. I, I was still young and naive, and I wasn't really taught until like like 13, 14 about what everything was. Yeah. But when Limp Biscuits, like I was still kind of young, when Limp Biscuits, uh, chocolate starfish, and the hot dog flavored water came out, I I I never really understood it and then I sat there and I was like the funny thing was like even though no one explained to me and I was still like a really naive kid when that came out I understood immediately what that meant <laughs> I didn't and the something about little, the correlation of those two things I was like oh I get it yeah no it it was uh, it went over my head like I'm not even going to lie to you I was such a naive kid. Like I didn't. I I, I knew the obvious cuss, uh, the swear words like shit, damn, hell, ass, yeah. like, and fuck. Uh, like I knew you were not supposed to say those words ever as a kid. Like, but I kid you not. Like this never. This word I never heard before, and I never knew. Like I never heard my mom say it. Never heard my dad say it. Never heard any of my friends say it. And I'm sitting there as a kid. Uh, I don't remember when this movie came out. I gotta look it up, but I was still, I was probably like 11, 12 years old. I had no idea what this word meant. But the movie Rush Hour came out, and Chris Tucker, Jack Chan. Yeah. Uh, Chris Tucker, the scene I'm talking about, he walks into a bar, goes up to another black guy, and says, What's up, my N word? <laughs> and I was like, I don't know what that means. I thought it meant like homie or something, which it, it 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 can be interpreted like that. But I had no idea what that means. And then you see Jackie Chan go right behind Chris Tucker and say, what's up, my N-word? And it's like, holy crap. And I, like, I noticed that he was like, yeah, let's not say that. And I, again, had no idea. It was a bad... 1998, so... Actually, I was nine years old. It's a 98 film. So I was nine years old. I know, shown your age. What, 98? 98. I, I was nine years old. I was born in 89. 15? I think I was 15. Is that where that is? Yeah, I know. No, so old. So life will end for me soon. Carry the torch on. Yeah. <laughs> but, it, but it was so weird because I went up to my brother later that day because... Me and my oldest brother were watching, and I go up to him. I said, what's up, my N-word? <laughs> and my my brother looked at me. He knew. I don't know how he knew it was a bad word. I guess, like, he paid attention to bad. Like, I never really paid attention to that kind of stuff. I had so 
much attention deficit. I never really knew it was a bad word. So I go up to my brother and go, what's up, my N-word? And my brother just got up calmly, set his book down, <laughs> and he walked past me. And he all of a sudden, down the hallway, you hear, Mom, Dad, Clint said a bad word. I'm just like, no, I didn't, no, I didn't, no, I didn't. And then I'm like, all I said was N-word. And I... Dude, I got my ass tore up. You know it's bad. You know it's bad when they don't even ooh you they, when you do something bad. There's no. never that situation where you're like, ooh, I, I, I'm going to tell him to tell. I, I think all he did was just, <laughs> this is golden. This is, like, screw Clint. He's in deep shit. Like, this is a huge win for me. Yes. <laughs> no need to acknowledge it now. Let's it go away. I got to go now. Yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. know, man. Like, <sighs> My mom was probably one of the best and worst parents all at the same time. Um, Because, like, I remember, like, my first, the first uh, uh, audio cassette I ever had ownership of that wasn't, like, a Teddy Ruxpin thing. Like, I remember putting the tape in, because, like, my mom gave it to me. She was like, oh, this is funny. Because I was like, what's, uh, we would watch and stuff, we would watch stuff on uh, on TV, like Sam Kennison and everything else. I was like, well, what's, what's funny? And she gave me Robin Williams Live at the Met, 1986. I listened to that tape on a Teddy Ruxpin. That's how little I was. Like, <laughs> no lie. And uh, I remember those bits to this day. It's one of the things. I've listened to it so many times I wore the tape out. Um, but she would let me watch, like, Sam Kinison. I was seven watching Sam Kinison on HBO, like, staying up late on Saturday nights watching comedy. Uh, we'd listen to Cosby in the car on the way to school. So that's, like, my reference is, like, I mean, you go, like, I, I can go deep. Judy Tenuta. Like uh, so many people don't even know who she is, man. Like that's that's in my uh, Elaine Boozler. Spell it. Elaine Boozler. Um, she was in Kinnison's camp. Brett Butler. Brett Butler. No, 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 no. I, I know. Before Brett. Grace Under Fire. Like that. That's how far back that went. But yeah, like Bill. Like not so much Bill Hicks, but I was kind of aware of him. Carlin for sure. Um, some prior. But yeah, those are all. I mean, uh, that's that's ages six, seven, and eight to me. So that was like, yeah, that was that was when that started. I think uh, my first. I mean, of course, everyone starts out with Robin Williams as first like comedian uh, stand up because it was somewhat accessible to kids, even though yeah. that even though Live at the Met was like pretty dirty. Well, like I saw on so many, uh, so many of his. Uh, like kid movies, like say Aladdin, yeah, and then uh, funny comedies like, uh, like Miss Doubtfire, like family movies, yeah, and then Hooked and Flubber, yeah. Well, like I still have the original VHS of Flubber at yeah. my mom's house, but all this and all that, I mean, yeah, I think it was my dad. He turned on, he turned on Robert Williams' uh, stand up, and it's just like. That's the same guy, right? Yeah. Because if you go why is a, he why is he swearing so? <laughs> I can like, imagine if you go from like Aladdin as your reference yeah. and you see him and you hear that voice come out, you're like, "That's the guy." That's wait, the, this is so dirty. Yeah. The genie's dirty. What happened? Yeah, <laughs> you just have a panic attack. And then there were uh, like like there were times when I would get up and just watch like HBO late night. It was either. It was either one thing, like you had to go through the uh, channel guide where instead of just like, okay, do push cup buttons, go through the channel guide. No. When you, that was a book? you ha <laughs> Yeah. Where not only a book, but you had to sit there. If you were on channel, if it was on channel 43, just scrolling down like a teleprompter, you had to wait till you can go to one. Oh, that one. Yeah, that okay. one. Yeah. Where it played the elevator music, and it's, then all of a sudden, you don't know if you're going to get to the start of 100 because all of a sudden the preview comes up. It's like start this fall, and like it would mess up. I I wish you could. Like, it used to play late at night, and then I don't know. There used but to be. I used to always watch Comedy Central late at night because there was some funny. I remember when Comedy Channel, uh, well, it still is, but there was only like one to like 99 channels on just cable. 
Man, this is but before digital cable came out, where it's HBO's four 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 on Comcast or a thousand fourteen. So you're you're kind of you're kind of messing me up here because there was a period of time from like age eight or nine to like age nineteen where I didn't have cable. It was just whatever came over the air. Oh. So I didn't have cable TV again until like 2002. Like after South Park had already been a thing for a while, mm. we finally got cable TV again. I was like, I, I didn't even get to see South Park until I went over to like friends' houses in high school. I'm like, what is this? And I just didn't have like the reference, the background to really give a shit about it. <laughs> That's, well, and it was kind of the same thing with Chappelle Show. Like I didn't know about Chappelle Show until I was in uh, a Best Buy. My my mom. I mean, I. I still, to this day, I don't have a set schedule on which shows I had, like, uh, the only show, the only two shows in the past, like, five years that I've really tried to keep up with is uh, Big Bang Theory, which is freaking hilarious, and, um, well, this show's been over for for, for a couple years now, but uh, How I Met Your Mother. Okay. Those are the two series that i remember monday night but when it becomes like fall slash winter time they change to thursday night yeah. so we gotta k- keep up and i always set my recordings to those shows the other shows and everything on so i never really got to like sit there and keep up and watch like all of south park i can't i can't even really if it's on the tv i'll watch it but it, yeah I, I can't sit there and force myself to watch South Park unless if someone says you have to watch this episode. Yeah. I'm, like the I'm, Somali Pirates one when all the when uh, what's his name? Uh, Captain Phillips mm-hmm. incident happened. That was I'm the captain now. Yeah, I, <laughs> look, look at me. <laughs> yeah, That was the episode I was told to watch and then I think I just graduated high school or I was in the midst of graduating. Again, showing your age. Uh, I was a late bloomer. Uh, it's six years. It's just a six-year difference. Yeah. Uh, Which is significant. It That's yeah. fuck what you heard. That's a significant difference. Yeah. Uh, where, Especially because I, I was raised they by did, old people. Where they did the Kanye West, uh, the first fish one. Dicks. The, what do you call gay fish? Fish dicks? Yeah, fish dicks. Or, yeah. Uh, like, what does that make you as a gay fish? Yeah, hold on. I'm going to look Kanye West South Park. They they brought him back supposedly. I just haven't been able. To. I don't remember him outside of the outside of that one episode though. No, they brought him back a couple times. Because the the gag was is like it is it, explained too much because I'm sure everyone's aware of it. But the gag was they would ask they'd ask a friend like, "Hey, do you like fish sticks?" And the person would say like, "Yeah, yeah I like, no, I, like fish I, I I I graduated that year." And actually, around that time, that was pretty funny. It was probably one of my first. Uh, 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 Jeez, April- I think I was in like my second career at that point when that came out. April- so what April- year was that? April eight of oh nine. Jeez, yeah, man, I, I graduated oh nine because uh, I failed like two grades. That's so that's crazy, I, dude. But I graduated like. It was a buzzer beater. It was either I drop out or get my GED or I graduate. Yeah. And I, I hit the game winning three. But yeah, yeah, I was at I was at the second job, a- April eighth, two thousand nine. Hey, I, I I worked. Yeah, my whole uh, I actually got a job when I was 15. no. But here is the thing though: like uh, by the time you saw that, I was in my second my second job in my sort of second career. Wow, uh, <laughs> like I'd already had like six years in the first game and then jumped ship and became like an IT admin and had already left my first position at the first company I was at to go to my second one. That's that's how that's how big of a difference that is, like contextually from adult to like childhood. That that's that's crazy to me. We're already winning seven to nothing. I know I already mentioned that, but I, I'm by the time that you listen to this, you're going to know what the score is if you care at all because yeah. it's going to come out the day after. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we've, we've, Spoiler alert. Yeah, I we know. We won. We've tried to do, like, live updates, and we realized, like, very quickly that, like, by the time the show was actually on the web, 
It's the game is long since over. You've already seen the highlights. Okay. Well, real quick, uh, be caller nine if you already know what the score is when yeah. you listen to. <laughs> be Biff from Bla- uh, Back to the Future. Yeah, one of my favorite bloopers from this week is the uh, is the kicker missing the net on his practice kick. Did you see that? No, he missed a three yard. Oh kick wait, no. Practice net. Uh, uh, ESPN has the uh, not top ten. And I did, uh, what was, uh, Green? I can't remember what kicker it was. All I know is I pointed and laughed a lot and didn't care what team he was on. Yeah, no, uh, it, it is pretty funny. I'm, but he missed a three-yard kick into the practice net and just bombed it into the crowd. Hey, <laughs> free fan gets a game ball. Yeah, but imagine if he's holding nachos and he's not paying attention. He gets beaten in the face of the football. That's going to hurt a lot worse. I, I don't know if they get to see this little live video or we <laughs> get to, but if not, then uh, just for the viewers at home, I'm giving the finger yeah. to uh, Chad right now. You want to make that? I'll make it a highlight. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Do it again. Do it again. Pew, 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 pew. It's better. Chad, I'm going to kick his grand bows. Now we gotta take down a copyright notice. Uh, copyright notice, please, yeah. uh, please, Trey Parker and other. Uh, damn it! <laughs> That's so. I just. So I just insulting. I, so I, insulting. I just know Trey Parker. <laughs> <I'm> just, <laughs> wait, hold on. I got I gotta look it up now because uh, Matt, just, Matt Stone. Matt Stone. Matt Stone. Sorry, Matt. Like you're. Uh, Forgettable. Like, you, you're the Meg. <laughs> You're the Meg of Family Guy. That's so insulting. And now I have to apologize to Seth MacFarlane. It's like, sorry, Seth MacFarlane, you're yeah. I like I like your traje- your career. You're trajectory. the Matt Groening. Damn it! I like your career trajectory because if they wanted to, they could buy and sell Comedy Central. And for a comedian, that's like that's just kind of like kicking yourself in the nuts like 15 years ahead of time, you know? Oh yeah. <laughs> It's like, I remember when that Clinton Shorter, he he went on this uh, podcast of Chad Alexander's uh, yeah. uh, Third Coast Nerd podcast, and he, he, he didn't remember my name. If this podcast he, comes he up. He remember again. Trey's, and Trey's like, oh, I don't care. Like, it's up to you. I would love so much that if at some point you're in the Comedy Central studios and you're pitching a show. And this just happens to come up on a screen behind them while you're pitching the you, show. You, you just see, <laughs> you see Trey just in there, like, yeah, man, hey, it's good. Like he's sitting there, like, hey, I'm giving you the thumbs up. What about you, Matt? Yeah, Matt, just like, let's go to the TV. Let's go to the, let's go to audio file. And yeah, just and then as like, you're walking out, they're just like, the Texans were always garbage. <laughs> 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 they lost Watt too many damn times. It's like, mama, no. Mama, no. Uh, yeah. How so, the hell does that happen? Uh, no, I should have more points than that, you jackass. Fantasy football? Yeah. Man, I... It, it, no, no. Like, I just lost first place last week to the guy currently in first. But this week, he lost, and I'm beating my opponent, which is another comedian friend, uh... I'm just going to call him Neil. Uh, he he actually, uh, he's pretty funny. I'm destroying him right now uh, to 90. He has 93, 98, and I, I am on my way to uh, have the score of 151. That By so. the way, it took you forever to explain your score. <laughs> Don't care. It's 90, 93. And there's a there's a a, a dot a decimal. That, there's a decimal, and there's like a ninety eight afterwards. It, it, there, and there, uh, there's a two week decimal system. And then and then and then this week no and then this week I am rupturing, absolutely just just curtaining someone in the skull so bad. It, my score one hundred fifty two, one hundred fifty two point three two, to eighty nine point five four. Who's That's your my, star? Who, who, See, now we're just, like, playing on our phones and stuff. And like, oh, yeah, what oh, yeah, level yeah. of Candy Crush are you on? Yeah, for everyone that tunes in the show, because it is a nerd show, and we should yeah. probably talk about something nerdy at some point. Um, Batman. Yeah, Batman. 
we're talking about comedy, which is not interesting to anybody outside of comedy. And we're talking about fantasy football and Houston sports, which is not really the demographic for this show, but it is a Houston-centric show. So we have covered Houston sports. And I have Lamar Miller on my fantasy team. Um, you have... I, I only have DeAndre Hopkins, and I norm I picked up Will Fuller. He was out for the regular season, yeah, the, like during the draft, and he was on the waiver wire. And they said that they were that he was coming back, and I'm like, hmm, pick up, and he'll just sit on my bench for a while. And when he came back, I put him in, and holy. I had Watson because my quarterback draft was really weak. Oh my god, I almost made the hugest mistake. But I'll let you. I'll, I'll let you tell this. No, I had Watson, and yeah. Watson performed beautifully on my team mm-hmm. until he got hurt. Unfortunately, yeah. I almost made it, it. It happens every year. You may have some sports fans on here. You may not. I don't. I don't know. But every year, I normally do a trade, like I. I am the uh, not the Grim Reaper of trades because no one ever dies, but their season does. Because whoever I'm trying to, like, I trade away, their season's gone. Yeah. They're they're done for the season. Like, it hap- it's happened since my first year of doing fantasy football, and this is, like, my sixth. Like, uh, for instance... A couple years back, I had Doug Martin. Mm-hmm. He, uh, I, I had no idea really how to play, like that much, and I, I didn't, I didn't hear anything about him. But I auto dropped it, and it picked him up first. And I was like, "Why the fuck? I don't know anything about this dude." And he, he came off of explosive rookie season, yeah, and then he's here now. Like he was, like supposed to be the number one overall fantasy draft pick so i pick him up and i was like man i don't want him and my brother was like hey if you give me this guy and this guy i'll give you jimmy graham and marshawn lynch and i was giving away my top quarterback at that time and doug martin i was like fine do it i don't care and supposedly i was giving him the better of the deal yeah but that never happened because, like, two weeks, both of the players I traded away went down so hard. They were out for the rest of the season. And that's happened every year since I've played. When I trade away a player or if someone declines a player that I want, that t- that player goes down for the rest of the year. I almost made the – right now I'm I'm sitting in first place. I, I just won back first place with this game. Yeah. But last year, or this year, I tried to trade for Deshaun Watson because I had Fuller and uh, uh, Hopkins, DeAndre yeah. Hopkins. So I was like one in triple threat. They always score. Those are – he never – like it's either Deshaun doing running it in or – they were doing – this was the second week he played, and – had cons- two consecutive games with five or more touchdowns. So I was like, damn, I I want him. So I I offered up Tom Brady. I put Tom Yeah, Bra- we talked about this deal. Uh, I put Tom Brady and I think uh Adrian Peterson uh, or it was either marking I put those two guys just for Deshaun Watson. And the guy said, let me think about it, let me think about it. So I kept on sending proposed trade, proposed trade. I was gung-ho. I was like, man, I got to get Deshaun Watson. I was like, I got to get him on my team because then I'll have – he always passes it to Fuller. He always passes it to Hopkins. And then he runs it in. So just think of how many points I'll get. Yeah. Well, he said, nah, man, I just can't do it. I press decline. Which that early and- on in the season I was like, he turned down Tom Brady. Which just seemed like insane to me, because like yeah, like it, he's he's going to be a known quantity for the rest of the season. Yeah, and it just like the idea that someone turned down that deal. I'm like, man, that's 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 either insane foresight, well, or just insanity. Well, I'm kind of pissed because I, I don't want the curse to happen. I 
I'm not saying it's a curse, but he took it took out. No, our, we've established we've butter. established butterfly effect. Yeah, you held on to the nachos. <laughs> hence Barry Bonds. Hence what every we can lay we can we're gonna lay Harvey on you here in a second. Uh, it's it's everything. <laughs> but the Astros made Harvey so much better. Yeah, yeah. After all that, it was really good. Um, I really liked uh, pointing out to New York fans at the F1 race in Austin that they wore the wrong hat. Oh, dude. Um, I During that time, there were so many people, because the city of Houston was just over flooded with people like coming in from out of state to see the game just like anyone else. Yeah. Uh, and there were people repping their... First, it was Boston, which we we won that series. Then it was New York, and then it was Dodgers. Anytime I saw someone in someone in the opposing team's gear, I was like, "Hey, man, you got some dirt on your shirt or dirt on your hat?" And I'm just like I'm sitting there, I'm like, and they're like, "Oh, oh," wiping themselves off. I'm just like, "Oh no, I don't think that shit's coming off, man." And he's like, "Where is it?" And I was like. It looks like letters that says L.A. And well, my encounter was like I was on the I was on the bus to go to the front gate at the track the mm-hmm. Saturday of Game Seven, mm-hmm. and uh, to the to the left of me was a guy in an L.A. hat, and right across from him, he didn't reveal it until later on. I didn't see any paraphernalia on him, but he revealed himself to be a Yankees fan. And so I just turned casually to the L.A. guy next to me. I was like, "You realize I was wearing my Astros hat? I was wearing two thousands era Red Star hat." Mm-hmm. And I turned to him and I was like, you realize just because of our lids, we now have to fight to the death. And just kept a straight face. And he got like really panicky. I was like, sometimes these are just jokes, man. Like yeah. <laughs> He got really panicky. But then all of a sudden the New York guy wanted somebody. He's like, I'm a New York fan. I was like, you didn't even have the balls to wear your team hat. You showed up in like some yacht club hat to a car race. And you even wear like, you didn't even wear your team colors and it's game seven. What's wrong with you, man? He's like. I, I didn't fly down with one, and I just – you go buy one. If it's yeah. your team in a game seven, you yeah. go buy one. Oh, no. Like, I I bought I, – I could not do this at all, but until after every game won, I could not go ahead and purchase a T-shirt. I had to wait till we won that series yeah. to purchase a shirt or memorabilia. I was sitting there at, like – when we won our uh, our division, I got a division champs uh, AL West division champ shirt. Then when we won the divisionals, uh, then we won the uh, ALCS. I got an ALCS champ shirt. And then uh, my dad said Houston Astros World Series shirt, not World Series champions. It just says that we're yeah that in, you're in it in the World Series. Because that that kind of goes back and forth with the ALCS. Hey, we're going to the World Series. Yeah. And I sat there. Uh, I was in a crowded bar. And first two outs, bam. The ninth inning, game seven. And when they were in L.A. And I sat there on my phone. I pulled up uh, MLBshop.com. And I just sat there and waited. I was like, this is going to happen. And my buddy sees it like um, my buddy uh, Trey was sitting next to me. He was like, "Aren't you going? Aren't you going to order it now? They're going to sell out." I'm like, "No, no." Because well, I knew they weren't going to sell out, but I was like, "Knowing my fucking luck," and no one was on base, so I was like, "Knowing my fucking luck, they're going to like either walk this batter, butterfly effect shit." If I press yeah, yeah, order, yeah, see, and send, you learned the lessons from the yeah, nachos, man. Yes. Yeah, so I was, uh, I just went. I have it on standby. <laughs> I had my phone right here, and I'm just see that's like, even getting like I, it's it was getting close, but when I saw the grounder go to Altuve, I immediately grabbed my phone for confirm order send, and then I high fived everybody. I was just like, yeah. because even that for me for like baseball mojo, what you did would have really would have would have really made me nervous. That even, that that's like saying, oh, is he pitching a perfect? Don't you don't fuck. you no. don't comment. No. For people you who don't. aren't familiar with baseball, like you can comment on something with football, you can comment on something with basketball, but on <laughs> baseball, the mojo is legit. You yeah. never comment 
on how well it would, when the game when it's serious. You never yeah. comment on how well you're doing. You shut your whore mouth when the game is serious. Because that's when it would seriously go off the rails. See, some friends of mine who aren't familiar with Baseball Mojo made one too many comments game six. Therefore, we lost. They're at fault for they. They had the thank you, Chad's friends. The proverbial nachos were held on to the, the butterfly effect. The butterfly effect. Yeah. Jackass. They Ashton Kutchered the whole damn thing. Oh. You, but you Kutchered it. Kutchered the whole damn thing. But yeah, like I after the flood and after I talked to my grandparents and everything else, that's when I started hunting for all of the stuff. And I didn't even like really order anything until like the next day. No, uh, oh my not, god. Not, not for like it, the superstitions over at that point. We won the game. No, no, we like, won the game. We won the series. And you know what? I, I saw a live stream video from Academy. I was like, I don't want any part of that. No, I did. I, I mean, there was Academy right down the street, but there was no way in hell I was going nah. to try for that. Not even a chance. I ordered it online. It was like three to five day shipping. I was like, cool. I am fine with that. When it comes in, it comes in. Came in on day four. Bam! I put it on. But. Uh, what was I just going to – I wasn't going to try for that uh, Academy BS bullshit. No, going out live in the streets while all that's happening, I was like, I've seen – I'm a hockey fan. I've seen Boston go nuts every time they win a cup. I don't know how Houston's yeah, going to react. 94, 95 were, like, civil, but I don't know how things have, like, ramped up since then. So. Oh, no. My buddy, the uh, – What's it called? The whole uh, damn! I can't really think about the. You can close that because I'm it's not, clear you're going to win. Yeah, no, it's pretty it, evident at this point you're going to win. It's ninety nine percent chance that I will win at one forty one oh eight to ninety three ninety eight. I mean, like, he, how he many? He still has that. He still has that one percent. But like, what seriously though? Like, what players does he have playing right now? None. His then players you're are done. Already, you're his done. players Why are already done. It? No, because I want to see how much DeAndre Hopkins does for me. I I would have the double threat with Will Fuller, but he's out. And like I did it to myself too. Then I realized like he literally has no players playing for him for the rest of the week. I, I do that so much. I'm just like <laughs> I keep on wanting to be like I want to see us intercept the ball and just kneel at the one and just lob it to my player real quick just for more po- it's like a Madden game I, I wish it was a Madden game just like where I 56 points to nothing in yeah. the first half and I was projected so high d- just because Julio Jones Julio Jones Fuck game this week you Julio Jones that's that's after four that, weeks of him not really doing anything well no he uh what do you use Yahoo or uh NFL NFL okay I'm just telling you real quick, uh, because he, and surprisingly enough, he's on this team called All Hail King Julio. So, so for like nerd references, um, this is like uh, Julio. You're, he's projected to score so high. It's like Batman in Justice League, but then you re- you remember that that uh, Ben Affleck's playing him. Yeah. So <laughs> it's probably going to be pretty terrible. Everyone, he's. He's projected to do really, really well, but everyone's loving Aquaman right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, He's projected yeah. to be like at least three quarters uh, uh, Matt Damon. Yeah. Wait. You mean. Oh, I get it. Good will. <laughs> I, I, I'm just like, you, you, you mean Ben Affleck, but then I was like, the, wait. It's, you, so, what the apples you like ratio to the apples you don't like ratio? applesauce bitch <laughs> but yeah so um yeah julio jones actually scored 50.880 yeah in my league and, he got like 51 point something and i always sleep on him because like there are good years and there are bad years but this guy is now tied with me for first place but th- this other guy that he just faced can give two shits less because he hasn't even set his team. So, it does, like, if if I was to tell you, everyone, I think he just gets rid of good. He's one of those people that just could care less, really, about his team. Yeah, it happens. Well, to kind of to wrap this up, because I think yeah. we're going we're going almost an hour here. So, for, 
for the first show back after a while, this is actually a pretty good pretty good run um, for collectability collectible stuff. This has been the weirdest uh, wait for collect for collectibles to come in. I ordered all of the newspapers for the Houston Chronicle, and I ordered the Sports Illustrated uh, issues for the Astros, mm-hmm. and neither of those have arrived yet. You, no, to be honest, uh, that man. It, it, for those that don't know, this man back in twenty fourteen, he wrote a news. Uh, he wrote an article. That's what I was going to get to. We actually had them, and we sold out before I can get them. So I had them on back order. And it pissed me off because I wanted to get them for my dad's birthday. The 2014s or the 2017s? Because uh, they I, reprinted the 2014. Uh, they, they reprinted the 2014. I was wanting to get the 2017 too. Yeah. But uh, we have those at my work. We had, And I kind of hit one where they will stay forever hidden until I get, <laughs> See, until I get to them. But uh, I'm going to get that secret. I'm not going to give that secret away no, because we actually used to do it for toys yeah. at, uh, at, retail, at retail spots. Yeah. But uh, – so I'm sitting there and I'm like, okay, this is so awesome. Like, uh, like I got, I'm, I'm getting my dad this awesome gift. I'm going to get him the 2014 one. Now I'm going to get him the 2017 one. Like, prophecy fulfilled, right? Yeah. That guy, he's probably like high fiving. Like, he probably got a raise just for that article because it was true. He did Moneyball scheme, like the Moneyball movie with. Uh, Brad Pitt. Yeah, that's a true story. Obviously, with the uh, oh yeah yeah uh, Oakland Athletics, but he was like, he called that guess and he said in 2014, your 2017 World Series championship, uh, the Houston Astros, and so many people are like, he's high. Like, <laughs> there's not a chance because we just came off like losing a hundred games. We, yeah, we had like three losing seasons in a row, and then. We got all these bats, all this pitching and everything, and it was awesome. And we won the freaking World Series. And it was the, one of the best days of my life to, to see as a sports fan is a hometown bringing home a championship because we haven't, what, seen the championships and 95? Yeah. Well, I mean, we no, took, no, we, uh, I, as far as winning, yeah, one. winning one. I mean, going to the championship, nah. Uh, well, yeah. Sorry, and I'm sorry, about, Houston Dynamo. I'm talking about the big three, though. I'm talking about as far as the big three goes: NBA, NFL, MLB. Yeah. Because like I'm a hockey fan, but I still don't count the Arrows championships as being a big championship to the city. E- even though like there is a like whole United States football, like I've still never been to the Dynamo Stadium. I mean, I've been outside of it. It looks really, really cool. And I've, I've gone twice, and it's a damn good time. I, I, I've I've really heard that, but I'm just – I can't sit there and watch soccer. I, and I know I, nothing about soccer. I, I, I literally know nothing I can play about it, sport. I can play it on the uh, PlayStation or Xbox, whatever, and it's fun to play. Uh, but I, I'm i not one of those hardcore fans. I'm a hardcore fan about baseball and football, and that's it. But yeah. Football or soccer, the original football. Uh, <laughs> I think you have to pronounce it like that, though, like football. Fut- football. Football. No, uh, but yeah, we haven't really brought home a championship since '95, so it was it was bittersweet to finally, like, 22 years later, bring home awesome championship for the city of Houston, especially after Hurricane Harvey. Yeah, and it's good times, man. Yeah. It's good times. But yeah, I'm still waiting on uh, even a shipping notification for my newspapers and my Sports Illustrated. Yeah. So yeah, my future sister-in-law. Uh, she ruined, like I was going back, <laughs> totally ADD there, but uh, yeah, I was I was going to get that for my dad for his birthday or or Christmas whenever it came in, and uh, we're at his birthday and she brings it up to him. And I'm like, oh cool, like brings the present and I see two magazines. I'm thinking, oh oh cool, and then I see the magazine covers. And I'm like, fuck. We're like, <laughs> damn it. And dad's like, well, what? I was like, well, I was just letting you know I kind of ordered those two. And now I'm just going to keep them. <laughs> yeah, I know. I've got stuff to send to my cousin in the Middle East. He's he's deployed right now. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's 
in 94 and 95 when we won the when the Rockets won the championships I mean we were little kids we were, we ran around like every night after one of the games or the next morning after the games and stole like the Houston Chronicle off of people's porches so you're admitting <laughs> to theft um but, yeah statute of limitations yeah, uh, yeah I'm pretty yeah. sure I'm pretty sure that that on a, on a newspaper for that old is is gonna be fine. You know what? I'm not even going to kid you. Uh, this is actually one of the coolest things that I was able to find. I still have it to this day. Uh, when my neighbor moved out of their house, they gave us like I have boxes and shoe boxes and binders filled with uh, with uh, baseball cards and sports memorabilia. Mm-hmm. There is actually a rally towel from 1995 in the championship playoff. I have one. Yes. And I have one, too. And I have 1995 championship rally towel playoffs. And it's it's the year that we fucking won. Yeah. And it has the old retros. Uh, I mean, the style has seen better days. I mean, it's aged. It's but, not. Yeah, mine's not but clean. I, I, <laughs> no, I was, I, I, I've not used it to wipe up anything or no mine just stayed pinned to my wall in my room forever and it just you know gathered dust yeah i, I don't want to wash it because it's just like man and i i found it and i i, I kept it and it's, it, it's put away but i'm just like man how how much do you think that really is worth like yeah we, we won the championship that year excuse me i i really wonder what like who would want to have such a piece of? If you can price this, yeah. please leave a comment on the video um, or uh, you know message me on the on the Facebook page. Also, uh, in, in terms of curiosity about how much sports memorabilia, memorabilia may be worth, I have what was it? Uh, uh, FM one hundred K K I K K. I think that's what it was. The country music station. 100.3? 100.3 KIKK, one of those things. I have a... Kick? Yeah, kick. Yeah. yeah. A vintage, a vintage air quotes, vintage koozie uh, signed by Earl Campbell, <laughs> of all things in my memorabilia. I, 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 I need to see that. Like, Yeah, yeah, we'll show it after the show. Well, I'll show it to you after the show. Yeah. Yeah, we can wrap this up now because yep. yeah, we're we're long. So um, I'm missing my Texans. Yeah, if you're seeing, if you're watching this this week, it's it's... December it's not December yet it's November November 27th today um stand up dates uh, I think you and I are on the same show December 2nd December 2nd um I I don't know of the play R and A <laughs> there's uh, yeah there. R A Sports memorabilia uh, place out in Conroe, Texas. Sporting, yeah, sporting goods, I think. Sporting goods. R A. I'm terrible because I meant to have this up before. Yeah, uh, like we're just shooting from the hips. Sorry. Yeah, it happens. It happens. Yeah. Whatever we're gonna do. Um, but yeah, December second uh, in Conroe, um, a sporting goods store. <laughs> it's, a, it's a grand opening of a sporting goods store, and I may talk to the guy about, hey, would he want to buy a 1995 <laughs> championship <laughs> rally towel from the Houston Rockets. Uh, I'm searching for it because uh, I was tagged in the whole thing. So uh, uh, sorry, Jesse. Like, if you are listening to this, I you never really like. All I know is, yeah, I'm looking at yeah it. RNA I, Sports. You had it right. RNA Sports. Yeah. Okay. RNA Sports, uh, December second, seven p.m. Um, should be a good time. You'll see. You'll get to see me. You'll get to see Clinton. Um, I will also be. At the Blue Giraffe in Old Town Spring, December first, um, and tickets vary depending on how many people show up. If a lot of people show up, it's awesome. If not a whole lot of people show up, it's awesome. Somewhere in the middle ground, you get cheated by a dollar. I don't know how it works out, but it's a good show either way. <laughs> uh, also, if y'all are not doing anything any Tuesday night, uh, uh, Tuesday night uh, at Jive Bar and Lounge Comedy, we have open mics every tuesday but uh the second tuesday of every month we have a national headliner uh national touring headliner or just a very funny headliner come through and perform the shows are absolutely free i mean jai bar and lounge it's a cool little spot you can like over a hundred you've seen the place you've been there like over a hundred different craft beer selections and then you got 
all the whiskey, all the rum, tequila. An absolute um, magician of a bartender yeah. that comes up with all sorts of weird stuff. Well, well the whole bar staff is good, but uh, yeah. we have Walker on uh, just the whole place. Great place. Uh, I've been luckily to be able to produce comedy shows in that room for almost going on uh, almost two years now. Uh, that's that's impressive, dude. Yeah. That's impressive. Normally, do you have? Uh, do you know your headliner for December twelfth? No, I'm actually going to keep that a complete secret. Because uh, I know you said you were putting together something special. Yeah, I'm, I mean it's it's Christmas holiday. I got yeah. I got to put something special, and I'm going to keep it on the low key. Only only myself will know, or just in case if someone <laughs> backs out, I don't want to be like. And here he is, and then shit, we gotta find someone else. You're my second choice. No, uh, yeah, I got, I got something. Coming it was up. on some dude's random podcast, and we're gonna hold you to that. Yeah, there were promises made, Clinton. I was promised <laughs> cookies at this podcast, and none of y'all can see there were no cookies. You can get like a five day old pie I have left in the fridge. Deal. <laughs> All right, man. Well, thanks for doing this, dude. Not a problem. Thank After the truck cast got lost, I got really sad. But, you know, it's good to get back in the groove, and uh, I'm glad that everything still functions. Yeah. For for fans who have listened to this uh, this long or this deep in the show, there is one sad announcement. Um, sexy Computer Voice that usually starts off the show. Um, the website that I used, or the program that I used for that uh, that intro, to, to I, I would make a new intro like every week. Um the website has gotten rid of that voice algorithm. So that will be the last, other than like generic intros, that's going to be the last you're going to hear the unique intros by Sexy Computer Voice. So sad days. But oh well, you got to move on. Music. That's all a good night. Good night, guys.